One option is to observe the wave propagating to the left towards the absorbing material and compare that to the analytical solution. But this approach only works for very simple propagation scenarios where we can easily calculate an analytical solution. We should instead come up with a way to test the absorbing material so that we can repeat the test for any modeling scenario, even in two and three dimensions, whether an analytical solution can be calculated or not. Another option is to compare the result we are getting to the left of the source. So let's say here is our source and here's our absorbing material. So we could maybe compare here to the left of the source and we can compare that to the result from a separate, much larger simulation where the grid extends far enough that we do not see any reflections from the edge of the grid over the time steps we're interested in. So in that case, we would have the source way over here, probably much further away than this. We observe the same distance away and here's the edge of this grid. So we have, by the time the wave reaches all the way to the end and back, we will have already made our observation and compared it with this one. This option involves comparing the results from two separate simulations, a small grid with the PML and a much larger grid. In our particular modeling scenario, we have waves propagating both to the left and to the right of our source. So could we compare the wave propagating to the left of our source to the wave propagating to the right? For example, we could set an observation point where we sample the electric field, say 10 cells, to the left of the source over time, and set up a second observation point where we sample the electric field 10 cells to the right of the source over time. So this one uh, to the left, we would have our ob absorbing material nearby, whereas this one, we would have to have a much larger grid, and our grid right now is already pretty large to the right. If the absorbing material is working well, then the EZ fields at each of these observation points should be identical over, over all time steps of interest, or at least until there's a reflection from the very end of our grid. So here is observation one, and here is observation two. So to set this up, in our time stepping loop, we might write something like this. EZ at the first observation point, this would have to be an array to store all the EZ values over all time steps at location Imax divided by 4, which is our source location, minus 10. And we can also record a second observation point over all time steps, set it equal to the EZ field at Imax divided by 4 plus 10 grid cells. So this one is our reference observation point. And then we could calculate the error by just subtracting the two results. So the error, this would be after time stepping is done probably, although you could do it during time stepping as well. Easy observation, the first observation point minus the easy observation two. But instead of just simply subtracting these two results, it's more helpful to get a relative error. The relative error tells us by what percent the two results are different from each other. So in this case, we would set the error equal to the absolute value, so that's a B, of EZ OBS, observation point, minus EZ observation point 2. And we're going to divide each of those numbers, which is why there's a period here, by the absolute value the max value at of the reference grid, uh, reference observations, easy obs 2. So this would give us the relative error. 
Well, we've finished discussing the four changes that need to be made to the code in order to implement and test the PML. Go ahead and try to implement these changes in your model and also test your PML. Then we will compare our results.